where are you at currently, T, with um, Daniel Levy? Um, Levy out, <laughs> be clear. <laughs> but, you know, I just think the last few days has been terrible for him. I mean, um, you mentioned yeah, Potts shocker, joining. Yeah. Well, I mean, Potts joining Chelsea is one thing. Um, was it Friday when the Nagelsmann news came out that we just yeah. weren't going to bother with him? It was Friday night. We were settling down for a few beers, all relaxing. Yeah. And then it was like being hit by a train. I was convinced he was coming, Nogglesman. I was convinced he was coming. And then it's just like, bosh, no, have that. Not, you're not going to get anything like, you want. I think they're acting like nothing ever happened. <clears throat> I think Spurs are kind of thinking, we never offered him a contract, so you can't prove that we were in for him. But Spurs definitely approached him and his people, and um, that didn't happen. So, yeah, that's, that's so Levy right now, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not looking great for him. And um, this is a, this is no doubt the toughest period of his time as um, as chairman, main shareholder of Enoch, because um, I feel, I mean, I try not to think of Twitter as a huge arm of, you know, when you go to a Spurs game, it's, it's the same. Cause it fucking isn't. It's absolutely nothing like that. But it feels like some of that sentiment is seeping into games now. You know, in every game, I think, even at the Villa game, there are chance of, um, we want Levy out. And it's just... It's just part of our games now, and yeah, it's not looking good for him. No, what about you, Cal? Yeah, this is the biggest summer of, of his Tottenham career. Um, he has to get this right. He has to get a technical director right, director of football, whatever. And he has to get the right coaching appointment, and he has to do it very, very soon. We can't have it dragging out again for 60, 70, 80, 90 days like it did last time. Um, yeah, I'm. I think I feel the same as most people. I think we'd all like him to move on. I think we all feel that he's taking the club as far as he can. Um, but like you've said a million times, it's his club. Um, the the business with Nagelsmann. I I can, you know, I can reconcile that that he perhaps he's not the right fit for us. I can go with that actually because I, I I'm not sure that is the right thing to do. I do as much as I'd have fucking been well happy if we'd got him. I think perhaps someone a bit more low key with less ego may be may be um the way to go. Mm. But just the way everything's been handled, but we've been saying this for years, the way everything is handled is just a bit of a mess, isn't it? Um and I just it's I'm a, just not sure what we do next. It's the fact that we don't know. It, it, we don't know we don't know the truth about the Nagelsmann situation. There was there must have been some contact from either side, whether it be just talking to agents or an actual direct conversation with Nagelsmann from Daniel Levy. Something must be happened because it isn't just journalists making stuff up. There was definitely like there there is like an this does happen in journalism where they they exaggerate or or you know they put fire under a rumor so that they can generate headlines that will be clicked upon, which generates money for whatever publisher they work for. But there must have been something in this. So then to come back and go, Spurs were like, nah, you know, we, we looked at him and was like, we're not sure. And Nagelsmann's team has, has come out and said, oh, well, there's no contact at all. Something went on there. So whatever happened, we haven't got Nagelsmann as our manager. Pochettino has gone to, it's gone to, uh, gone to Chelsea, which is painful as it is. On top of the fact we don't seem to know what the next move would be. And if you believe the ITK that's out there, that there's different opinions on the board about who should be the next manager. How can there be, if you believe this, let's just entertain it for a second. So the, there's the idea that Daniel Levy might want Arnie Slot, And there are other people on the board that go, I'm not sure about him. That's like us on the podcast deciding who should be the next manager because we all have a fucking opinions. There needs to be one person who goes, this is what we're doing. This is the manager. These are the players we're going to sign for him. And this is how we're going to move forward. Instead, there's like a, lo- a, lo- a bunch of people that run the football club just flicking peanuts around and hoping one lands in the right place so we can decide where our manager is, like what, what our next manager might be. You think Nogsman, who's, who's building a career and probably will go on to be one of the best managers in the world, and Pochettino also already at that level of just behind the very best managers in the league, looking at this and going, why the fuck would I go there? That's what it feels like. I don't know what the reality is because we don't ever hear anything from the club. And then there is, there's, there's so much indecision and, and, and a lack of... Um, inf- uh, what's the word? Just a lack of just go-get-em attitude. Impetus. 
Yeah, there's no, there's a lack of impetus at the club that we as fans yeah. don't know what's going on. We don't know. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know what the next decision might be. We don't know what manager we're actually interested in because all we hear is nothingness and all we hear is from the press is saying, well, this move has broken down again. Why Why is it? Why, why are we one of the few clubs that just stall on decisions over and over again? And why aren't we learning our lessons, see? Tell me the answer to those questions. <laughs> I've, I've got no fucking idea. This feels like um, we're just punching ourselves in the face because um, this does feel like the new no search. Um, we, it was known that um, that Fabio was going to be in a spot of bother. There were dodgy dealings that I've spoken about months ago. So you'd think maybe get your ducks in a row, sound out other um, directors of football. So when it does happen, so you know what? We've got someone ready for you. But right now, we're looking for... So, a week ago, we were fucking elbow deep in Nagelsmann and getting him. You know, in, I thought, in, it, was, you know, the I thought it was, was practically so done. Yeah. And then they say, we don't want him, but there's no intention of doing so. And that just... What disbursement they were doing with that release, with that, with that press... It was blatantly a press release because Ali Gold and Dan KP said similar words. We don't intend to do so. So... It just feels so. It just feels so fucking muddled, and um, they've got this. You've got all these like football analysts. I think Stanton is one. There's a couple of others as well. So mm. You've got all that with no director of football. So mm. it just feels just so fucking muddled and completely rudderless. The mm. thing is with the the Enoch out movement is <clears throat> is growing, and it's not just really angry people on Twitter anymore. It's us. It's me, you, T. I know. I don't know where you are. If you're um, Enoch out or Levy out. Cal, I don't know where, where, I mean, how, where are you? Are you, you out? You, you think he should go? I'm leaving in all the way. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, I mean, if you're, I mean, this, all right, 60, 66% of this podcast, as it stands, are, are uh, yeah, yeah. don't leave you out. Are you in and out? I don't no, I want him gone. I'll you want to keep wanting well gone, but I just said that to be funny. It I know. Wait, was, it, was, it was it funny? Was it funny? It was well funny. Well <laughs> funny. Uh, <laughs> so 100% of the people you're listening to right now, three of us, uh, want him out. And, and, and I don't think we were there a year ago. We certainly weren't there when Conte took over. We weren't there when we finished fourth in the league last season. But a lot has happened this year that is going to tarnish what Daniel Levy has done at Spurs. My worry is that he doesn't recognise it. He doesn't understand that that is the reality. And the fact that we've gone from people that were really unhappy with Daniel Levy previously for what they would consider to be a mismanager at a football club, not back in Poch, you know, concentrating on things outside of footballing decisions, all the things that are fair, which I thought were fair back then. But I thought, let's give Daniel Levy much more time because look at what he's done with Spurs. He's elevated us to a club that can attract managers like Conte and Levy but the fact is that those two decisions have made have been incredible they were terrible decisions with hindsight I get why they happened but right now we can look back and go well, they haven't neither of those managers moved us forward they didn't so he has to take some responsibility and the normal fans i.e. In the people that weren't there at the beginning that weren't as extremely against Daniel Levy are now starting to move towards that I think there's more people now Daniel Levy out and Enoch out than there ever has been in his entire tenureship at a football club, that is that is something that he needs to realise, and people it needs to be made to realise. The only the only way I somewhat bend on that is that if he gets the director of football appointment right to rid him of having to meddle in the football side, that's the only thing I can really say. I say, well, I think three of us know with Levy he's not going to go. Eni can't going to go. They're, they're no, not, not going anywhere. No, no. no, no one's really going to offer these guys what they want. So. They're there, right? So, what's next? Getting a competent director of football. I don't think Scott Mann is a director of football. I think it's his head of operations. I don't know but what, yeah, I don't know what we he need is. to we need to sort that organisational structure out at, before the season starts. We can't be having a manager appointed in mid July when pre seasons already happened. We need to. It just feels that like there's no plan in place to hire the right people. So, I don't have faith in these guys to hire the right director of football and the right manager. I don't have faith in them right now. So. The frustration is the sound, yeah. aren't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, um, <clears throat> I mean, there's some people more on the extreme end of Enoch out and, you know, they've got the purple and gold and all that stuff. And I just think, 
I don't agree with you to that degree, but something's going to happen. And I never ever hear, I never read what should happen. I just hear, just want him out, mate. Fuck him off. And I've got this t shirt saying he's a cunt, and if you like him, you're a cunt too. But it's like, well, <clears throat> if, if they're not going to go, which they're not, how does he fix it? He's got to hire the right director. He does. And we've, we've been, I think, one bloke called Spores, I think, that um, Scott Mine's got links with. If that's if that's true, then why don't you tell the fucking why do you tell your beat press people to just push that out there? At the moment, all we've got is um is we don't want Nagelsmann and everything else is quiet. You're putting out the wrong rumors. Yeah. Go on, Cal. Not even rumors. Hire the cunt. If you want someone, hire them. Announce that that person is starting in June. Like we've got Scott Munn that's not even fucking started yet, but he's obviously doing bits and pieces, but he's not officially started. We've had this whole business with Paratici and him being under investigation with FIFA and all of that. 